Now that you're familiar with the overall workflow, let's try a more challenging object. I'm going to close down Maya. And I've got some assets here that I've downloaded from the Digital Arts Guild website. Breakageassets.zip In Windows Explorer, I can directly browse inside that zip file. And you'll see there's a Scenes folder and a Scripts folder. For the Scenes folder, I want to select that Maya ASCII scene file and copy it and place it into my current Projects Scenes folder. Right-click and Paste. The scripts need to go into the scripts folder within the Maya folder, not the scripts folder within your project. That might be a bit confusing. There are multiple scripts folders. The one I want is under Maya Scripts, as you can see the path here. Select those two scripts, copy, and then paste them into that folder. Then I'll relaunch Maya. Back in Maya, I just want to double check Windows Settings Preferences, Preferences. Make sure that my settings working units are still at centimeters. Then I'll open the scene file. File Open Scene, Stanford Bunny LODs. In this scene, I provided you with the original Stanford Bunny and also a version that's been reduced in complexity. There's a low level of detail and a high level of detail. I've also placed them on two different layers. You can see the display layers here. I can toggle their visibility. That's the low level of detail object you're seeing now. Turn that one off. Turn the high level of detail back on. And you can see that that's a lot more complex. In the display menu, I'll choose Heads Up Display Poly Count. Now we can see the number of components for the entire scene, for the selected object, and for the selected components. This high LOD bunny is currently almost 70,000 faces. Let's see about the low level of detail version. Select it. It's only 3,000 faces. My recommendation to you is that you try to keep the polygon count below 5,000. Even less is better. If you can keep it below 500, then you'll get the best performance. If you need the shards to look very detailed, then you're going to have to spend a lot of time modeling those shards. Here we're taking a kind of quick and dirty approach because the shards are going to be moving so quickly. If we add a little bit of motion blur on them, no one will notice that they're very low polygon. I'd like to mention also, it's very important that your model be watertight. You can't have any holes anywhere in the model. You can't have any overlapping surfaces. This is a very serious limitation, but it's one that you have to observe if you want to use the shatter effect or the crack me script. If you're not sure if your model is watertight or not, you can use polygons, mesh, cleanup to find out. It's out of scope for us to talk about all the modeling processes that would go into making a watertight mesh, but I just wanted to point out to you that the cleanup option might be of some use to you. Okay, I've got my high LOD and low LOD versions. I'll hide the high LOD by toggling off its layer. Select the low LOD version. Go to the Dynamics menu set and choose Effects, Create Shatter Options. In the Solid Shatter section, I can adjust the shard count and the jagginess. If you're working with your own scene, don't forget you probably want to save before you click Create because sometimes Maya can give erroneous results or even crash. This time, I didn't get any errors, so I consider myself lucky. You'll see I've got a shatter group, and inside that I've got a bunch of shards. I'm finished with my low LOD version for now. Select it and turn its visibility off. Then I'll go around to each one of these pieces and move them apart. Grab the Move tool 
and position all the shards so that none of them are touching. There's no easy way to avoid this. You just have to go through the process. Just make sure none of them are in contact and that there's a good healthy gap of a few millimeters between each piece. Okay, that's one way of getting a pretty good result. But if you want to, for example, chop up pieces at specific locations, then the shatter tool doesn't give you that ability. Let's say, for example, I wanted to cut this piece in half. To do that, I can use the Crack Me script. I've already placed it into the scripts folder in my Maya folder. Now all I need to do is select the object, go down to the Mel command prompt, and type in the word Crack Me with a lowercase c and an uppercase m. Crack Me. And press the Enter key. In this pop-up window, I can set attributes for a plane that will be used to chop an object in half. The number of divisions is the level of detail of the plane, and then we have the size too. I'll set the size equal to 5 centimeters, and click Create Plane. Now I've got a plane in the view. You can kind of see it. I'll scale it up a little bit with the Scale tool. And I want to position it and change its shape in order to create the cut. Move it up. can rotate it. And I'm going to set it so that it intersects this other piece. Ideally, you want the polygon size for the plane to be the same as for the object that it's cutting. To see this more clearly, I'm going to turn on Wireframe on Shaded in the viewport. And now you can see as I scale the plane up and down, I can try to better match the size of the polygons on the source object. If I were to execute this now by clicking the Make Crack button, I would get a clean cut straight through. But I want a jagged cut. I want the inside of the piece to be broken up. To do that, I'll go to the Polygons menu set and choose Mesh. Sculpt Geometry Tool Options. And I'm using the push operation. I can hold down the B key to change the size of the brush and then Sculpt. I can use the M key, hold that M key down to change the amount of push or pull. And I can also hold down the Shift key to smooth. The idea here is I'm just trying to create some random pattern so that the inside of the cut is not perfectly clean. Good. I'll just reposition that a little bit. And when I'm ready, I'll click the Make Crack button. And there you go. I've just chopped that big piece into two smaller pieces. Very good. Once again, I have to move those apart from one another so that they don't touch. Let's do a little bit of scene cleanup. These two new poly surfaces need to be placed into the group with the other shards. I'll select that and middle mouse drag it on top of the group name to place it into the group. And the other one as well. Left click it and then middle mouse drag it. I can also rename objects all at once. I'll select all of the shards, not the group, and then the input line is up here on the status line at the top of the Maya interface, and I can choose Rename from this little pull-down arrow. And I'll rename all the objects Fragment, and then press Enter. And now they've all been renamed, Fragment 1 through 10. That's a great place to save the scene to a new file name before we proceed to creating a rig and animating it.